Hi everyone, here's the Bookemist once again, and today I'm going to talk about the amazing adventures of Cavalier and Clay, one of my favorite books of all times. I recently reread it because I'm working on it for my postgraduate dissertation, and it I, I rediscovered how amazingly well written this old book is. I don't even know. In this video, I'd like to offer you a few discussion points, a few insights into the book. These insights are generally not mine at all, they come from essays or studies or scholarly works I had to read for my dissertation. There's going to be a complete bibliography of the sources I used to talk about, like to talk about the book in this video in the description box below. This follows the same concept of the other reader's guide I filmed about Infinite Jest and Gravity's Rainbow, check them out if you're interested. And in this video I'm going to give you a brief introduction into the book, which is going to be the only spoiler-free part of the video, which is really meant for people who have read the book and are looking for some uh, discussion points and like uh, for secondary reading suggestions. I'm going to talk about the role of escapism in the book, the function of escapism in the novel. I'm going to talk about the figure of the golem in the novel and about how comic books and graphic novels are depicted in the book. Escapism is very much a key concern of this novel, even a very superficial reading of it will tell you that. It is the story of two young men, like growing up throughout the book, of Joseph Cavalier and Samuel Clayman, two young men who will create an artistic partnership in the New York of the late 30s, in what is today called the golden age of comic books. They will create a comic book character, a superhero comic book character called the Escapist. So that already tells you a lot. The book will cover the span of a few decades and will, discuss, will touch many, many different and problematic periods in American history from the end of the Great Depression to the American involvement or non-involvement in World War II to uh, like a McCarthyism and like uh, uh, extreme moralism in the America of the 50s, lots of those kinds of things. But about escapism. Escapism today is not perceived as a very good word and Shaban himself is very aware of that, he has written about it extensively and there's a scholar called Dewey who believes that pretty much all of Shaban's production can be seen as the story of stories of escapism, of people escaping from their commitments, their obligations, their works, their everyday lives, from reality basically. My reaction to that is, yeah, more or less, but that's definitely a concern in this book, in The Amazing Adventures. The main character, um, Joe, one of the main characters, Joe Cavalier, escapes from Europe, escapes from the, the Nazi regime in his uh, native Prague, he escapes from his life in New York, to fight in World War II. Once he gets back from World War II, he escapes his commitment and doesn't go back home for 12 years straight. Even when he is in New York in the first part of the book, he arguably escapes the terrible reality of his situation, the situation of someone who cannot bring the rest of his family from his own hometown of Prague to the US. Keep in mind that, of course, um, both he, Joe Cavalier, and Samuel Clayman are both Jewish and he escapes this terrible reality through the pages of the comic books he creates, in which the main character, the superhero, the escapist, fights Razis, which are basically censored uh, Nazis, of course, and do, does all those things he is unable to do in the real world. Something very similar will happen at the end of the book, um, in, the, in another comic book, in another very long, very ambitious graphic novel, let's say, he uh, draws and writes, called The Golem, in which he will escape the terrible situation of his life after the war, of a life of someone who has not been able to save his family, who has, which has been wiped away by the Holocaust. And there are several passages, crucial passages in the book, in which Shaban, or at least the narrator, defend escapism in a very brave and very provocative way. One of my favorites come from a point in which the characters are talking about the, um, a court, which will decide whether uh, the negative um, side of escapism in comic books is dangerous for a young man. And of course, the narrator reflects as if there could be any more noble or necessary service in life 
than, of course, providing escapism to people. And several scholars have gone a bit hard on the novel because of the way it mixes these two things. We wouldn't mix together normally escapism as an attempt to, you know, go get away from everyday life, which probably makes you think, it makes me think of, you know, young nerds playing Dungeons and Dragons or people reading Conan the Barbarian um, novels from the 30s. At the same time, it mixes it with such a serious historical matter as the Holocaust. And some critics and scholars have said that, of course, this is a very dangerous game Shabon is playing because it might move people to, it might justify forgetting the Holocaust, which is, of course, the worst, the worst way, the worst uh, case of Holocaust denial. At the same time, what many critics, I, I think, fail to notice is that when you are so easy, so ready to, you know, condemn escapism in a book like this, to condemn uh, those people who look for escape from terrible, the dreadful reality of their situation in graphic novels or in fiction, you are kind of also condemning Joseph Cavalier, the main character, who escaped Europe at the beginning of the book, rather than staying there in Prague and fight the Nazi regime together with his family and together with the rest of his country. But, I mean, personally, I would never condemn someone for, you know, trying to get out of Nazi Europe. That seems like a very, like, a very good thing to do, a very sensible thing to do. So, you know, you should keep in mind this ambivalence, because it's not as... E condemning escapis escapism, even for, you know, righteous people, shouldn't be as easy as it is widely regarded to be. The figure of the golem in the book, a crucial figure in the book is tied to this theme in two ways. The first one, which not too many people seem to notice, is that it makes of The Amazing Adventures itself kind of a work of fantasy, or at least borderline fantasy, because it's not really like the golem is, an, like, of course, a historical reality, as far as we know. I don't think that many people notice this, but it's pretty much as if Shabon had used, I don't know, Bigfoot as a character in his novel, but whatever. The other more overt way it ties to the theme of escapism is that the golem is the model for uh, Joseph Cavalier's comic book heroes. At the beginning of the book, the golem, the actual golem of Prague, the monster, is what allows Joseph to leave Europe because he leaves the country, he leaves Prague in the same crate as the golem. The uh, Jewish community has decided to send the golem away and he, Joseph, will get out of Prague in that same crate. When he gets to America after this escape, the golem is the model for the escapist, this superhero who fights Nazis and tries to save his family, to save Europe against this terrible regime. At the end of the book, the golem serves a very different purpose in the other big graphic novel Joseph writes, as I said before, the golem itself, which is a much grimmer a much less hopeful kind of comic book. It's the comic book in which Joseph pours all his sorrow and despair and pain at the loss of his family, at the tragedy of the Holocaust. In a way, the golem there is no longer a hero, someone who fights and who can, you know, defeat evil. It's much more a story of suffering. And in the same way, at the end of the book, the golem, the actual monster, makes a comeback in the form of a crate filled with nothing but dust. But there's another very important borderline fantastic passage at the end of the novel that it's very easy to underestimate but that it's really crucial to the understanding of the whole book. Because as it's said, as it's reminded at the end of the novel and it's said at the beginning, once the golem gets out of prey, once the golem loses its shape, it should weigh nothing, it should weigh uh, like very little, because what gave it, gave it weight was the soul in it. At the end of the book, the golem is a heap of dust, it's really nothing, but for some reason it weighs a lot. And Joseph reflects what soul might still be in there, and if there might be more than one soul in it. The golem of Prague has not been able to protect the people of the city, as its history said it should have, but at the, at the very least it's in a way, it has taken on it the, so the weight of the souls of the lost people of Europe, of the Jewish people that who died in the Holocaust. In the same way as the Golem, the, the graphic novel drawn by Joseph, 
didn't really save anybody. Even the characters in the book are not heroes who save Europe, but at the very least the book shares the suffering of those poor souls, really. Finally, the last point I want to raise in this video, the graphic novel The Golem is brilliantly depicted by Shaban, because yes, it's an ambitious work, it's grim, it's very experimental also, both in, in form and in content. It is 2500 pages long, but at the same time, it is heavily, heavily indebted to the superhero, the popular superhero comic books Joseph Cavalier started work, started his career with. The title of each chapter of the graphic novel reminds readers of Golden Age comic books titles, you have all the tropes and standards of that genre. It's not a narrative that, as experimental, as ambitious as it is, it doesn't reject its popular origin. This ties perfectly with Shaban's opinion on popular culture and popular genre and popular fiction, genre fiction, in the way it shows that no, as uh, one of the characters say in the, says in the novel, no medium is inherently better than any other and that the popular and the eyebrow are not two opposite and conflicting worlds, but very often, especially in works of genius, they tend to collide and to combine with each other. Shimon has said that in his ideal bookstore there wouldn't be shelves divided in genres or whatever, there would be just one big shelf called good stuff, because of course the other shelf would be crap, and that wouldn't have, like, there would be no need to put it in the fucking story in the first place. Another brilliant way the book problematizes this relationship with, between high and low is that it mixes and combines and compares and contrasts throughout the entire book two very different, apparently very different, uh, forms of art as comic books, superhero comic books, which is as popular a form of art as it gets, and the avant-garde of New York in the late 30s, Salvador Dali, all those kinds of people. And it shows how these two worlds like talk to each other and uh, exchange opinions and exchange compliments and whatever, and they are not as separated as nowadays because of the influence or of this or that critic or because of our own prejudices, we might be forced or we might be moved to look at them this way. Uh, what a long sentence. Anyway, yeah, and of course the final example of this conjoining is that a word of this union of these two worlds is Citizen Kane, the movie by Orson Welles, which joins, which joins the popular and the experimental and creates a masterpiece which influences further Joseph Cavalier and comic books and in general, the book shows the interrelated nature of all this kind of media and makes you want to read comic books and books and watch movies all your life and to escape fucking reality in all these beautiful works of fiction. It's an amazing book, it's a gem. If you haven't read it yet, you shouldn't have watched this video because I've spoiled you most of it. I hope you read it, I'm sure you read it. Let me know about your experience with The Amazing Adventures in the comments below. By the way, um, Emily Chute is the scholar who um, showed the world this connection between uh, the avant-garde and comic books in The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay, but uh, she's Hilary Chute, maybe I call her Emily. But anyway, the whole bibliography of the uh, essays and stuff I've talked about in this video is in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching once again guys, let me know what you thought about this video, if there are if there's any book you'd like me to talk about in such a reader's guide, I'll see you in the next one, bye guys.